Hello everybody! Welcome to Fifi Quest, the only podcast brought to you from a hole in the ground in north of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. That's brought to you by a, a, a series of, of uh, telephone cans connected from a string uh, ranging from northeast Saskatoon to the Seychelles Islands in the Indian Ocean. Uh, to everyone who's listening via this series of cans and string, I say, uh, mahalo, or whatever you say in India's Hawaii. <laughs> hey everyone, it's me, Fifi Dash, here at Fifi Quest, the podcast that documents all the things that's going on with my gender transition week by week, how I'm growing emotionally, medically, spiritually, and all that. And then I goof around on some random nonsense as well. That's what I, uh, that's what I got. By the way, speaking of random nonsense, I, uh, I watched the movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory the other day. And, um, let me tell you, that movie is a lot darker than you remember it. And I don't mean because of, like, you know... The, the boat ride, or the kids maybe dying in the chocolate pipe or in the Veruca Salt in the Furnace. I mean, because I just learned that that movie was filmed in Germany in the 70s. So all the Oompa Loompas were little people born in Germany in the 40s. So, the Oompa Loompas saw some shit, you guys. You know, like, they probably got to the set and the saw the Chocolate River, and they were like, whoa, this looks like the time I hid in the outhouse while they murdered my wife. (laughs) That's how I'm starting off, because I'm all antsy. I'm all antsy. I want to get back to doing comedy and goofing around hard and doing some hard goofing, and that's what I miss. Hold on, I'm going to plug this in here. There we go. Okay, we're all plugged in now. That's what's up. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. You know, I, um... Oh, I got something that's uh, new in my transition. Big step forward. Wait here, everybody. Everyone, hey, if you're listening, I didn't go anywhere. I just went across the room for a second, so stay put. Here's what I wanted to show you. I, in the mail, got this. And what this is, is a home laser hair removal device. That's right. Can't wait around for the the laser hair places to open. So I'm going to do it myself. You just plug this thing in, and it shoots lasers on your body. And you, you burn the boy off of you with light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. It's not really a laser. It's quite, it's quite powerful, but it's like, you know, one of the frequencies that's just below laser. Although, because they won't just sell lasers to people, although when I was a kid, they had those laser pointers. We would shine them in each other's eyes all the damn day. That's all we did. Oh, don't shine these in people's eyes. They're terribly dangerous. And what do we do? Shine them right in people's eyes all the time. That's what we did. And now I am very nearsighted. So yeah, got this thing. You just you, you can't even, you gotta press it to your body. You plug it in, you press it to your body, and it goes, bash, and it like, it's a little hot. It doesn't really hurt. Um, it's a little like, woo, woo, on yourself. You kind of like, feels like a little mini, just like a, like a bitch ass defibrillator on your body. <laughs> So you do that, and it kind of hurts on your face a little. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah. Got to use it on my face. I'm tired of futzing around with Dollar Shave Club, I'll tell you that right now. My package was late, again. I'm trying to track the darn thing. Now it's going to be another three to five business days. Oh yeah, the fascist is trying to undermine the post office. 
so we can't mail in by vote, and he can extend his tyranny indefinitely, but uh, trans razors are late. These are the pressing issues of our times. So, that's what's going on with me. Um, that's what's going on with me. Hopefully we see some, hopefully we see some results with this sooner rather than later. Because I'm uh, tired of putting makeup on my tits. I don't care for that one bit. And uh, hopefully this will help with that. Tired of shaving every day. Tired of uh, doing a lot of, uh, you know, beauty jujitsu. Trying to look like I don't have a beard. And even then, some days, it's a little difficult. So, boom! It will burn away your impurities, Fifi Dosh. I will burn away your madness. Like a cleansing flame. That's what they... If I ran a laser hair removal device, it'd be called Cleansing Flame Industries. Just burn off the impurities like so much sin off your body so you can live in glorious femininity here at Cleansing Flame Laser Hair Removal. Yeah... I want to thank you guys all for listening. I like goofing around every day. I tell you, because, you know, like I've been saying, it's lonely. Everyone's a little lonely. and Yeah, I want to tell you what I've been doing is I've really been, you know, making a point to get out among people lately. It's like, i got to face the fact, like, you know, I can't just go to the comedy club and see, you know, can't just go to a place... You know, I was telling a friend what's so great about a place like the Comedy Store is any given time of day, you can go there. On Christmas Day, on Tuesday at 2 a.m., you can go there, and there's at least 10 super extra, super entertaining, at the very least, not boring people hanging out there, even if they might be a little, you know, uh, problematic or tiresome or irritating, but there's just always people there to keep you company and engage with, and then that's just gone. So, can't count on that ever anymore, and I don't want to be like, well, it's a lot of work to replace that. Well, okay. Well, I'm going to do that lot of work. Because I want to be around people. I was thinking, like, maybe I'll go camping again. Maybe I'll go, like I did in Montana, go take off Colorado for a while, and, like, what I settled on is... You know, as much as I love the outdoors, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to, don't want to do alone things. So much of my life was spent thinking, hey, regular life didn't want me. I can live on the margins. You know, what kind of things can I bring into my mouse hole to entertain myself with? And I don't want that anymore. Realizing the way out of that, the way out is up. And the way I go up is by interacting with other people and forming closer relationships with them and I am my real self now. And, uh, yeah. So that's what's up. Setting up some dinner dates with people. We're gonna have some steaks. I'm gonna make some potatoes. And I'm, we're gonna stay distant and safe. And we're gonna eat at the end of a, a long table. I was thinking the other day, I wonder if there's a guy at Ikea in the boy room, who, you know, back in January, late 2019, he was just tiring everybody at every board meeting, be like, I'm telling you people, what we need to invest in is long tables. That's what we need. And they're like, why, why, why do they gotta be long? Or, you know, they were like, why do they gotta be long? Or whatever Swedish people sound like. And he was like, well, what if you, what if you, what if you gotta sit far away? What if you need to do that? Huh? Huh? Do we ever think about that? And they were like, well, why would we, why would we ever need to, to, to sit far away? It's, what a preposterous notion, Bjorn. And he's like, I don't know why. I don't know why. But what if we did? Huh? 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 What if Wayfair gets on that? We're gonna be sorry. We're gonna be sorry. And then they're like, we gotta, we gotta get Bjorn out of here. Oh, we can't, we can't deal with this every day. He's on about the long tables every day. I don't want to hear about it anymore. And then he got fired. 
Bjorn the Long Table Guy did. And then he said, at home, I can't believe, I can't believe. And then what happened? Coronavirus happened. Right? Right? So he's just sitting at home, talking to his wife, you know, Orgstead. That's his wife's name, Orgstead. <laughs> and he's like, Orgstead, I was telling him. I was telling him. They, they, he became Irish all of a sudden. That we needed long tables. Long tables we needed at Ikea. I kept telling him. I kept telling him. And now look where we are. I could have saved the day. We could have been sitting far apart. Everyone. We had the highest death count of every nation we did in Sweden. Long tables. And then Ulk said, it's like, Bjorn, I want a divorce. <laughs> So it just goes to show you, everybody. You can have the greatest idea on earth, but if you're uh, if you're a pain in the ass, no one's uh, no one's gonna build your long table. We can learn something from that. <sighs> That's what's up. That's what's up. By the way, um, I've touched on this next subject a little bit, but uh, it behooves repeating. Not sure if that's the correct word, version, way to use behooves. It felt right. I'm gonna go with it. I gotta tell you guys right now, um, sex, cause I, as a woman, versus sex as a man, is so much better. Everyone, it's bananas. It's absolutely. Convivially, ecumenically better as a woman with estrogen coursing through your body. You think I'm, you think I'm playing around here? You think it's a game? It's not, everyone. It's crazy better. Like, you j I don't mean to be crude. And mom, turn this off right now. But like, you. J you <laughs> You just keep coming, you guys. You just, you just don't stop. You keep thinking, surely this is gonna stop. This is too good to be true. And you don't. And you don't, everybody. Like, and I understand. I understand. I'm not, you know, I don't have a great, a true control group in this experiment. Because as great as sex as a man could be, you know, if I hated being in a man's body, if I'm disgusted by the notion, am I getting a true account of it? Believe me, I factor that all in. It's so, <laughs> so much better. Ah! Wow! Yeah, guys, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to have to say this. But it is what it is. It's like I'm getting lightheaded just thinking about it. <sighs> what do you? I mean, and, and 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 you know what? Afterwards, you have so much energy. Afterwards, what do you think I was doing right before I recorded this? I got a bit of pep in my step, don't I? Don't I? You know why? You know why? Cause I indulged in some self care, as they say. <laughs> You know, take my 22 cents on the dollar. I don't give a fuck. Like, money well spent. I'll round it up to an even quarter. Not a peep of complaint out of me. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you guys. Like, and you know... I feel so bad for men. I do. Because it's just your brain... Just tells you, you gotta, you just gotta do that. Like, you guys are, guys are so much more, I don't even want to say obsessed with it, compelled to do it. They're just, you, if you've ever had, if you haven't had a man's level of testosterone in your body, you have no idea what a fucking puppet on a string by a cruel god you really, your testicles and penis really are. 
It's utterly satanic, is what it is. You're like a Greek god that lost a bet. You're like someone that Loki was fucking with, and he's just in a cave trying to nut his way out, out of the cave, and he can't. Cause you know what coming as a man is like, it's like I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, and then you fall asleep. You know why? Cause you don't want to stay awake to be disappointed, <laughs> right? It's like why shitty Netflix shows are bingeable. Cause you're just laying there on a Sunday, thinking about how much you hate your job, and you're like, well, you know. This show sucked. Oh, another one's starting. Okay. It's the same principle. But women, after, after, after you come, ladies, you're wide awake. And, 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 you know, you got some spring in your step. And you want to, like, dance the Charleston. You know why? Because God wants you to realize how, to reflect how good you have it. (laughs) Ah, that's what you do. And look, I un- look, I understand, ladies, that it's harder for us. There's a reason. It's harder to cook with truffle oil than to throw a lean cuisine in the microwave, isn't it? Because, you know, when, you know, ladies with sex, you're like in the bubble bath. And you're like, oh, you know, I'm not really in touch with my body. I really deserve some me time to really feel... The inside of the glorious statue of Venus that my body really is. Oh, yeah, what a shame it would be if I weren't in touch with every single little, right down to my finger digits. That'd be a shame if I weren't appreciating that from the inside out. And now I get to lay down, oh, on my soft little bedspread. And I just get to, oh, I thought I was enjoying it there. Let's take this a little further. Let's take that a little further. You know, and uh, you do your thing, whatever you do. And an hour 45 minutes have gone by. You know, you just watched, you know, a comedy movie this length of time from the 1980s. (laughs) And you devoted that to coming. And then you're just awake. Aren't you? And you're like, wow, I should clean my house. And while I'm doing, think about what a gift life is. And I, you know, if there's a man there, this gives you plenty of time to, you know, think about what you're going to cook him for breakfast. Or throw his car keys away. Or whatever you do. (laughs) And you're just wide awake going, gosh, isn't life grand? And that's your sexuality. You know what a man's sexuality is? It's just come, come, come. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. All right, you did it. Now go to sleep. Go to sleep. Shut up. I don't care if your knees hurt. Just go to sleep. Is your mattress lumpy? I don't care. You came. Now sleep. Now wake up and invent something and die and just die and just die. And I don't get. And don't you dare take a time for a bubble bath, you faggot. And that's what it is. And that's, uh... And that's God's plan. (laughs) Oh, it's nonsense. Errand nonsense, as Margaret Thatcher would say. Yeah. So... Yep, yep, yep. Just, um... I'm not gonna, you know what, I feel like I've spent some episodes talking about what I miss. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna talk about, uh, what I'm going to do with, uh, my life. And the positive steps I've taken, I am, you know, I don't care if COVID is necessitating the effort, extra effort to be around people. I don't care, I'm gonna do it because I'm worthless. (laughs) I'm going to do it because I'm worth it. Jeez Louise. <laughs> that ought to be the cover girl slogan. Cover girl, cause you're worthless. Cover that hideous face with some goddamn, you know, shellac. And, uh, and you know, various kinds of insect droppings. You know, 
and beef tallow and rub it on your face and tell you're pretty, you unlovable bag of shit. Who are you kidding? Pike off a girl. <laughs> but I'm worth it. I'm worth putting in the time to see people. Because my presence is a gift to life. And I am, I am worth other people's presence in mine. And I'm worth the effort. So we got that. And, um... Yeah. A lot of people been hearing a lot about uh, a lot about people moving out of LA really recently, and um, people are going, you know, thinking like, look, I mean, it's more of a challenging place to be in. I've spoken about that with COVID, but um, in I was thinking about that too when I was up in Montana, thinking would I be happier up here. And uh, what I've been thinking lately is no, absolutely not, because what am I really missing here, you know? I like to do outdoorsy stuff. I can do that here. It, you know what? It's not, really, it's not really that much more difficult to do outdoorsy stuff than it is living in Montana, really. Because you're still living in town, you still got to drive and, uh, you know, do all that. I can do all that, no sweat. So I'm not really missing anything out there. Um, well, it's harder to be around people. Uh, well, or I'm thinking like, oh, you know, my industry is closing down. Yeah, but it'll open again. We're not going to do this forever. And, um... Uh, when it does open, where's it going to open? It's going to open here. At least partially. Maybe people plant seeds in other places, and I think that's just, um... I'm not trying to believe in scarcity. I don't believe they'd be taking anything from here. They'd just be making good things elsewhere, so I don't think I'm missing anything there. And, um... Other than that, um... The only reason I could think to be down on where I live is um, it's harder to be around people. And A they, A, they got COVID everywhere, and B, is it? Is it really hard on people, or am I just inclined to isolate? Because I remember feeling very alone living in small town places. I remember feeling very alone when I lived with people. So maybe... I've just gotten comfortable, you know, in a rut, and uh, convinced myself that that's just the way it is. And, um, yeah. So uh, I think uh, before I would ever move, I'm really going to give it a go here, because as far as I can tell, everything I need to be happy, and then some, not only just to be happy, but to pursue dreams beyond my, you know, just wildest conceptions, that's all here. And the coolest people I've ever met are here. The most entertaining, the most engaging, the most fun. They're all here. They're all here of all different walks of life. So, you know, and, um, yeah, there's some wackiness here, but you know what? There was every goddamn where I've ever been in. And I kind of think, um, there's this, in certain um, spiritual practices I do, there's this notion called pulling a geographic. And that's thinking, well, there are problems in my life. It must be because of my exteriors. I'm going to move. But as they say, wherever you go, there you are. So, I think um, if I'm feeling lonely and I want to feel more quiet, more fulfilled, um, more of an identity in my life, more, um, I have an identity beyond what I've earned in my career. I can do that here. And I can do my fun career stuff I want to do. You know? And you know what? If it ever came to a point where I could do f just so much fun career stuff somewhere else that would be more fun, I would do that too. But for right now, I mean, just everybody cool is here. Not just saying there aren't cool people anywhere else's, but I just, when I look at the scope of my life... 
they're just, I mean, there's just, you know, an embarrassment of riches in terms of just cool people here. And that's because it's a big place and it attracts goofy people. You know? And uh, I want to really, 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 really work on my insides and not use COVID as an excuse to isolate and stay in a little comfy rut because I don't really think I need to. I think there are ways to have a lot of people and a lot of love in my wife uh, safely and responsibly. And that's what I'm going to do. Because I have felt like I've been in a whole... When I lived with people, when I lived in alone, when I lived in a small town, when I lived in a big town, so that leads me to believe uh, the issue is inside. And I really believe I have everything I need to uh, deal with those issues. And I have every faith they're going to be. And if you struggle with those sorts of things, I hope you do too. And I promise you, you can find uh, what you need to work on that kind of stuff. It's out there. Don't be afraid. You know, I don't want to, I, you know what, I'm not going to phrase it as advice. I'm going to keep it to my experience. Uh, I have really uh, been re been rewarded by the idea um, that I don't need to be afraid to ask life for big things or what I think are big things because when I ask for life for big things, sometimes I find that they weren't really big things at all. And compared to the amount of love that I've learned that I'm worth, I'm like, oh, that's not a big thing. That's just a, that's an appropriate thing. Because I'm a great person worthy of the good things in life. And then you can keep pushing it, keep pushing it, keep pushing it. You know, not even push it, that even sounds a little graspy, let's say. Um, maybe just more open. Yeah, more open and more vulnerable and more willing to take up space and more willing to believe that my needs and wants are good and that they enrich the world, not just because I'm worthy of enriching, but my bringing me up brings everyone up around me too, you know? So if you've got some old belief, well, ah, fudge it! If you've got some old beliefs holding you back, I hope you find a way to just burn them off like old hair follicles. That's what I say. Ah! Ah! And you know what? You know what, too? I've, um... I have found, you know, I've been, I, uh... I did, I did my friend Earl Skakel's podcast recently. Um, shout out to everyone at Inappropriate Earl. Uh, Earl's one of my dearest friends. I love him very, very much. He's such a sweetheart. He's always been my friend in comedy and one of the sweetest dudes. And I love that he's in my life. But when I was doing that podcast, you know, I haven't been out and about uh, partying and let, let loose with my new self. And I'm still, I'm still giving myself time to adjust to, you know, adjust to Fifi. The new, the real me, the new me. And, um, it reminded, I was feeling a little tentative when I was doing that podcast. Because, you know, you are, you know, I am performing. I'm performing when you're doing a podcast. And so feeling a little, uh, I don't know, am I okay? Is this okay to say? I remember when I was doing stand-up back in, back in the long, long ago, uh, before the, you know, before the Great War and the nuclear detonation, and we've all, you know, we all retreated to our to our respective bunkers. Um, I remember thinking before I would go on stage, I would say a little centering prayer, because I felt like I had just put myself in this box, and I was in this box trying to be like, do you like me? Do you like me? Do you like me? And I remember thinking, you know, before I would go on stage, I would say, blow apart the box, or blow up the box. And I would just let loose and just say just wild shit and just let lo and just go nuts and just say the gnarliest, I don't give a fudge kind of stuff. And it was so fun. And part of that was me wearing whatever I wanted on stage. And, you know, I'm like, hey, I'm going to wear this women's top and I'm going to wear makeup and you don't like it. Fuck you, because I'm crazy. And, you know, like, 
doing that brought back uh, stuff into my regular life. And um, that's what I love about performing is you're kind of yourself times one and a half for that moment. And then when you're being that expanded self, you go, hey, there's some stuff here I'd like to uh, fold into the 100% and expand that. So, and I realized I could do that in regular life. So, um, when I'm performing now, and when I'm living life, I'm going to remember that. Blow open the box. Yeah. I can deep, I can take that into regular life. So... Anyway, that's about a that's about a half hour, gang. I had a hoot doing this podcast. I hope you had a hoot listening. And uh, yeah, that's what you get. You know what? Just letting loose on Phoebe Quest. When you listen to Phoebe Quest, you're listening to an owl with throat cancer. Cause I don't give a hoot. <laughs> In all serious, so I love you guys. Thanks for your support of the podcast. Um, as usual, if you'd like to, to spread it around and tweet about it and tell your friends about it, I would appreciate that. If you'd like to, you know, leave a review on Apple Music or wherever you listen, or leave good comments on YouTube, all those things help me out so much, and I really love that you guys do that. And, um, yeah, your guys' support means everything. I'm grateful for it. I'm glad to share this with you. And, um... Thanks for being part of the the fiefdom. Huh? I love you guys. Have a great week. Bye.